would you bring a thing like that home? Today I'm going to review Daughters of Satan from 1972. It's directed by Hollandsworth Morse, written by John C. Higgins, and it stars Tom Selleck before his magnum deers. And this was released on a double bill with Sofa Based. It only runs 90 minutes, and it's a film not talked about. It's kind of like a forgotten film. So Tom Selleck stars in this film. That's unusual for him to be in the horror film. Hey, that's that bugger out of Magnum. The bugger with the tash. Yeah, he was. He was in Magnum. This was before Magnum. And I think Tom Selleck was really good in this film. He he can do, like, comedy very well. But in this film, he does it... He's, like, serious all the way through with it being a horror film. He's a, he's a good actor. He, it's a pity he wasn't in more genre films. And also, like, his tash. <laughs> hey, Phil, do you like me moustache? I should be the next Magnum. <laughs> so he plays an antique dealer who happens to see this painting of these three witches getting burnt at the stake. And he's struck by the likeness of the one in the middle because it looks exactly like his wife. So he buys the painting and takes it home and all these weird things happen. The... People in the painting keep vanishing and appearing in real life. So like there's a dog in the painting that vanishes and then it appears in real life outside the house barking. So strange things like that happen. So it's a weird looking painting as well, really eerie. When I used to watch this film as a kid and uh, recently I wonder why he doesn't just burn the painting. You, you think that would solve the problem. And the film has a downbeat ending that I won't reveal. Quite shocked us when I watched it as a kid. I watched it on a Saturday night at a horror double bill. This is one of them films that stood out as a kid. And the film does have, have a, like an eerie feel to it. Involving witchcraft and a creepy painting. Like both them subjects are quite eerie. Anything involving like um, evil forces and witchcraft is quite spooky. Because it could sort of like happen. Another good thing about this film is it's set in the Philippines, in Manila. And I, I've been there, I've been three times, and I've lived there for a, a few months as well. So it was interesting seeing it. Because with my wife come from the Philippines, I've been there a, loads of times. So I, I really enjoyed the place and it was good seeing it on film. I've only been in the Philippines four months and the whole world goes insane. That woman in there, she looks like the third witch in the painting. So it had some really good locations. It's good when a, a film's made in a foreign country instead of just England and America all the time. There's also some 70s music. Uh, it's quite nice actually. It's, it's good. <laughs> There's a bit of nudity as well. You see um, a couple of women showing the breasts. You have been guilty of shocking weakness of will. Your devotion to the pagan Catholic faith is heresy to our Lord Satan. Core, ah! blimey! Look at the bloody knockers on that! <laughs> I thought Bones would like that. But it's a film not for everyone. You, you do have to be like really into horror films and especially horror films from the 1970s, which I am, to fully enjoy it. And it does have slow parts to the film. And the fucker! <laughs> so overall, it is a eerie film. It's like a, one of them films that's never mentioned. And Ray really watching it, it's not as good as I used to think it was. But overall, it's still pretty good, and I'd give it 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. But the deal from Bones is still like I thought it was a shit deal. The only thing that kept me awake were the bloody knockers. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe, and share. Bye. Bye. Oh, no, no.
Put that away. It won't do any good. What do you mean? It's a 357 Magnum. Go through the engine block of a car. Yeah.